Hi, my name's Richard Duffy. I'm the SAP Business One product evangelist and I'm part of the SAP Global Small and Mid-Size Enterprise team. I'd like to thank you for taking time to join us for today's live demonstration of the purchasing functionality in SAP Business One. One of the areas that many businesses struggle with is this area of purchasing. In particular, what I like to call rogue purchasing. This is scenarios where unauthorized people go ahead and they place purchases on behalf of the organization without checking back against things like budgets or even, even if there is a budget, that they don't have the authority to do that. Well, SAP Business One gives you total control over that and helps you manage that. Let me show you exactly how we do that. I'm going to take you now through the purchasing process. We're going to start with the purchase quotation. We're then going to go through the process of uh, putting that into a purchase order. We're then going to bring in the goods and look at a couple of other aspects of that. Now, you can use the purchasing functionality in SAP Business One not only for the purchasing of products, but you can also use it for the purchasing of services. You don't even have to create a purchase order at all if your business process so dictates. You can just go in and start entering in from the accounts payable invoice. For example, you're getting a utilities bill, your electricity bill, or whatever the case may be. Business One gives you the flexibility to handle all that. But in this demonstration, I'm gonna take you through and show you all the possible uh, ways that you can, you can use the software. Then you'll decide which way is the right way for your organization. So let's look at the purchase quotation in the first instance. One of the things that you might do is you might decide that you want to send out a quotation or a request for quotation to your suppliers. So uh, you can go in, you can choose your supplier. In this case, I'm going to say, I want this to go to uh, Acme Associates. And I can specify all of the parameters around this quotation, dates, the validity dates, the document dates. I'm gonna now go and specify the products that I want them to quote on. So again, I will go in here to my items and I can specify that I want them to quote on IBM InfoPrints. I can put in a required date, so I need these by the third of next month and the quoted date is going to be today. Now I can override that if I want to. The next thing I might want to do is specify, well, this is the required quantity, so I want you to quote me for 10 of those. And then I'm going to leave the quoted quantity blank because when they come back, actually provide the quote, I'm going to put that information in and I might want to leave the unit price blank as well. So I can then say add, it's going to say the document total is zero. Do I want to continue? And that's okay. Now, again, uh, and I've left this field blank just so I can show you, if you leave out any information that's required by SAP Business One to properly process a transaction, you'll see down the bottom you get a little uh, pop-up message, a little uh, red message telling you what you needed to do and it'll immediately put the cursor into the field. So I forgot to specify a required date, so it's just told me that. It's put the cursor up here on the required date. Now, if by chance you can't remember what the last error was, there it is in the error log, which I quickly popped up, I can see it was to specify the required date. So that's fine, I've looked at that. I can minimize that down again now. I'll go and say, well, the date I require this, I require it by Friday the 3rd. And now I'll simply go back in here and I'll say add. It's updating all those rows. And my purchase line or my purchase quotation uh, is now done. So I can take that purchase quotation now and I can print it out again simply by clicking on my print function, and there you go. There's my purchase quotation. So I'm sending this out to Acme Associates. I can now take that, um, that purchase quotation when it comes back in and update their information into the purchase quotation. So then 
I am able to decide which one of my suppliers I want to purchase from. So that's great, but what if I want to send out this purchase quotation to three vendors and I want them all to quote? Well, does that mean I have to do this one by one? Not at all. What we have inside SAP Business One is we have what we call the Purchase Quotation Generation Wizard. So right throughout SAP Business One, we have a number of different wizards, and the purpose of a wizard is to help you automate repetitive tasks. If you looked at the order processing demonstration, you would have already seen the Document Generation Wizard. Well, in the Purchasing module, we have the Purchase Quotation Generation Wizard. So if you wanted to take a purchase quotation and rather than doing it just to one vendor, you want to send it to multiple vendors, that's where you would use the Purchase Quotation Generation Wizard. So I choose it from the menu and the wizard screen comes up. I then say next. It asks me, do I want to create a parameter set? So I want to take all these values that I'm about to put in and save it so I can duplicate it again easily. I do want to do that. So I'll just say, this is my default purchase quotation set. I can give it a description. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Next thing I want to do is specify, okay, which items do I want to generate a purchase quotation for? So I'm going to specify my required date for this is the 3rd of next month. My required quantity is 10. And then I'll say next. Again, it's popping up and it's asking me to make sure I've filled in all the right information. You can see I haven't put in a validity date. So I'm going to put that in now. Valid till the 3rd, and then I'll say next. That's all the information that I've got. Now, if I want to, I can specify that this is not only going to this vendor, but I can uh, get it to go to other vendors as well. So all I do is I right click and I'll say add row, and then I'll pick a different supplier. So I also want Far East Imports to quote on this. And I'm gonna do the same thing, and I wanna compare apples with apples, so I'm gonna give them the same information and the same required date. And if I want to, I can also then go and add other quotation lines as well, other product codes. So I can do as many or as few as I want each time I run the, the document generation wizard. So I'll say next. As previewing my results, that's what's going to happen. I'll say next. And now I can save that parameter set and execute it. I can just execute it without saving the parameter set. Or I can save the parameter set and exit. It's going to ask me what happens if I do encounter an error. Do I want to skip to the next vendor or stop the execution? I'm going to leave that as skip to next vendor. So I'm going to save that parameter set and exit. I'll say next, and that's it, done. So now that allows me to very, very quickly and easily generate those purchase quotations to a number of different vendors all at the same time. If you're doing a large amount of processing, it can save you a lot of time in that cycle. So that's our purchase quotation and our purchase quotation generation wizard. So the next thing I want to show you is the purchase order process. Let's say, for example, you've just got a standard purchase order that you want to raise. Everything I've done up until now, I've shown you uh, the functionality for doing it for items. In this particular instance, I'm going to show you not only an item purchase order, but I'm also going to show you a service purchase order. Let's do the item one first. Let's say from Lasercom, I'm going to purchase some product. So I'm going to purchase some printer labels. So all I do is I go in to Lasercom. Uh, I can specify the posting date, the delivery date, all of those things uh, I've got total control over. I can then go in here and specify how many do I want. Well, I want a thousand of them. And the, that's my unit price. I can specify my tax code here. And again, uh, the default tax code will pop in, but I've got total flexibility there over overriding that if I want to. And then there's my total price. So that's it. To do a purchase order, it's that simple. I then go in and I'll say add 
and that's it, my purchase order is now created. And if I want to, I can go ahead and print that out, same process as before with the purchase quotation, or I can have all that information automatically taken out of the backend SAP Business One system and sent electronically to my supplier. So there you see the purchase order that's been produced as a result and I can print that out or I'm able to fax it or whatever the case may be. So that was an example of creating a purchase order where you're purchasing product. So now I'm gonna create a purchase order in the scenario where you're purchasing a service. So I'll go here and I'll choose vendor and I'm gonna purchase some services this time from Anthony Smith. Again, I'm gonna leave all of these dates as the defaults. I can go in and override those. In this case, I'm gonna change this to a service-based invoice. So all I do is I change this from item to service. And then I put in a description. So I'll put in here installation of printers. So um, <clears throat> in this particular instance, sticking with our printer example, I've ordered the printers to come in to stock and now uh, in order to get those installed for one of my customers, I also wanna give a purchase order to my installer. So that's what I'm putting in here. I get installation of printers. Now I can specify which of my general ledger accounts is going to be updated here. So which of my expense accounts do I want to use? And again, this is a default chart of accounts that I'm using, but you've got total flexibility with the way your chart of accounts is designed. We'll talk about that in our general ledger demonstration. So I'm going to choose in this particular instance that I want to allocate this cost to my other professional fees account. Again, it's up to you how you configure that. You may have uh, an implement or an installation costs account in your general ledger. Uh, totally up to you how you configure that. And then how much am I going to pay uh, Anthony to do this? Well, I'm gonna pay him a flat rate of $100. So I put in 100 and that's it. I can put some remarks in as well if I want to. I can say, um, please install as per standard process, call Richard for details. All right, so I've got that information there. What I can also do if I want to is I'm able to add additional uh, information onto the purchase order. So I can add additional text information if I wish. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna leave the order as it stands and I'm gonna say add and that's it. There's a purchase order is now being created for services. So I've got the ability to handle both of those processes. So now I've got my purchase order for my goods and my purchase order for my services. What's the next step? Well, two things can happen. I can receive the goods or I can receive the goods together with um, an invoice. So in the first instance, I'm going to receive the goods. So I'll go in here and I'll say, I wanna do a goods receipt PO. That's what we call it. I can pick the vendor or what I'm able to do is when I'm looking at my purchase order and let's look at our last purchase order here, our last invoice or our, our last item based purchase order. I'm able to go in here and I can say copy this to a goods receipt PO. So I can either go to the process and then pull in the information or I can go to the information and then push that information into the process if that makes sense. So in this case, I'm gonna create a goods receipt purchase order. So it's saying, okay, in this particular instance, what you ordered was a thousand of these labels at 50 cents. So there's the total amount and is all that okay? So I can now say, yes, that's all fine. And I'll say add. So what it's now doing is it's allowing me to pull that in. Now these printer labels, I've specified in the system that I wanna track batch numbers. 
So all it's doing now is it's asking me to put in the batch number details for these particular printer labels. So for example, if I've got to track expiry dates or anything like that, I have the capability to do that. So this is batch number 1A Charlie Golf 2, because that's the batch number that's either on the product or it's a batch number that I've decided I'm going to make up internally. So I'm bringing in a thousand and I can define what these batch attributes are. So I can say, you know, I've got two user definable batch attributes, plus I have these other batch attributes, an expiration date, a manufacturing date, uh, a location and details. So, you know, let's say I can say, well, the manufacturing date on these was February 16th. And then I'll say update, I'll say OK, and OK again, and now add, and that's it. My goods are now in the warehouse. I've recorded all the batch number information. What I haven't done is I have not yet um, created the accounts payable invoice. So let's now go through that process. So I'm gonna go now into accounts payable invoice because remember I've receded the goods, but I have not yet receded the invoice. So who is it coming from? Again, this was coming from Lasercom. I can say copy from goods receipt PO. It'll give me a list of all the goods receipt POs that are sitting in the system. And by the way, I can, if I want to, by holding down the shift key and selecting all of them, I can bring all of these goods receipt POs into one accounts payable invoice so I can consolidate them. In this case, I'm just going to say, nope, I only want the single one. And I'll say choose. Same thing with the order processing wizard. It's going to say, do you want to use the exchange rate that was active against the document when you created it, or do you want it to update with today's exchange rate? I'm going to allow it to uh, update with today's exchange rate. I mean, it's the same date anyway, um, but you get the general idea. So then I'll say finish. And now I've got my accounts payable invoice information. So all I do as you'll see, there's a thousand of them at 50 cents. All that information's pulled in for me automatically. I just go in and put my vendor's invoice number and say add. Oh, it's reminding me, hey, your posting date is missing. So I want to put the posting date as of today. And then uh, it automatically knows that I'm on 30 day terms with this supplier. So it's automatically created and updated my due date. I've got my document date, everything is good to go. So I click on add, accounting transactions are about to be created. So I'll say yes, uh, I know that and I can't change this now unless I do an accounting transaction. So that's my accounts payable invoice is now brought in. The next step perhaps might be if I have to process a credit memo. So just the same as we did with order processing, you might have to be the person who's returning product. How do we do that? Well, in SAP Business One, there's two ways we can do it. It depends on whether or not you've just received the goods and no invoice, or you've received the goods and an invoice. So the first one I'm gonna do is where you've received the goods and the invoice. So I'm gonna return the last set uh, of product that we just received in. So in order to do that, I go in and I choose Accounts Payable Credit Memo. I pick the vendor that I'm returning to. In this instance, it's Lasercom. I go down here to my Copy From button, and I say I am copying it from my Accounts Payable Invoice. And then it's gonna show me all the Accounts Payable Invoices that are in there. And there is the one that I've just done. You'll see, comes up to the top when I double click on the columns to sort by that field. I'm gonna choose that. I'm gonna tell it to use the exchange rate from the document that uh, I received in on. And there it is, so I've got a thousand at 50 cents, and I'm now going to return those and process the accounts payable credit memo. Now let's say I only wanted to process, to return uh, one quarter of them. 
Again, all I need to do is just say, I'm returning 250. And that was my unit price. And you'll see it recalculates everything. And then it's gonna allocate this credit memo against that invoice. So the invoice amount owing will be reduced. Hopefully that makes sense. Or I can go and say, I'm gonna return them all. And that's what I'm gonna do here. So that's all fine. Nothing's changing there. And I'm gonna say add. And now I also need to take those products out of the available batch. So again, there's the batch number that I brought them in on. So I choose that batch number, bring it across here to the selected batches, and now I'll say update. So all of that batch numbering, all of that serial numbering, when I'm using products that have batch or serial numbers tracked, that's automatically captured for me. And now I'll say add. Again, my accounting transactions are going through. And I need to select a thousand from that available batch, drop it across here into my selected batches. Say update, okay, and now add. And that's it, my goods are returned, my batch numbers are updated, and as well as that, my uh, accounts payable has been updated the credit memo has been recognized and all the underlying accounting entries have been processed for me. Now let's say, for example, I was in a situation where all I was producing uh, was a goods return. So I haven't received the, uh, the accounts payable invoice yet or the supplier required me to do it in two steps. So then all I do is I go here into goods return. I'm gonna pick a different one now. I'm gonna pick Lumax. And let's say I had this goods receipt PO. And here's all these different items that were included on that, uh, on that goods receipt. Let's say I only wanted to get rid, uh, or to return rather, not get rid of, to return one line. So I can go shift and I can select the rows that I want to get rid of and I can just delete those rows simply by right clicking. So just the same as in the sales order entry demo, I showed you how you may need to return product uh, or your customers rather may need to return product to you. In the purchasing process, you may need to return product to your suppliers. And that's it, so I'm only returning this one row. I'll say add, and that's now done. So now I've done the goods return, and then separately I need to come in and process the accounts payable uh, credit memo if there was one, or if I'd never received the accounts payable credit memo, then I wouldn't need to do anything further. That's the process involved in purchasing. We've been through, we've raised our purchase quotation, we've raised a purchase order, we've brought in the accounts payable uh, invoice, we've also brought in uh, the goods, we've done a return where we've sent back the goods on their own, or we've sent back the goods and received a purchase uh, or an accounts payable credit memo. So that covers the entire end-to-end -end purchasing process. If you've got any questions, don't forget you can click on the ask a question button and we'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you.